Now we're going to take a look at the derivatives of standard trigonometric functions. In the previous video, we've established that the limit of sine x over x at 0 is 1, and that the limit at 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x is 0. So now, if we try to differentiate sine x, and we go by the definition, this is a limit as h is approaching 0, of sine of x plus h minus sine x over h. So we have a sine of a sum and there is a standard trig identity for that, namely that the sine of a sum is uh, sine of the first angle multiplied by cosine of the second plus sine of the second multiplied by cosine of the first. So if we apply that in that context for sine of x plus h we obtain sine of x cosine h plus sine h cosine x. So we substitute sine of x plus h for this and you see that uh, in what we obtain at the top we can factor sine x out of the first and third term in the sum at the top. If we do that we obtain sine x multiplied by cosine h minus 1 over h and the remaining term is sine h cosine x over h, in which we can pull out cosine x. You see that these two terms, sine x and cosine x, do not depend on h, and therefore for the limit we're considering, they are constant. On the other end, cosine h minus 1 over h, we have established that the limit of this, when h tends to 0, is 0. As for sine h over h, when h goes to 0, it goes to 1. So each one of these terms has a limit when h goes to 0, and therefore we can use the fact that the limit of a sum is the sum of the limits, provided that all the limits exist, and then the constant multiples, we can pull out the constant out of the limit. And we obtain, we obtain this expression, sine x multiplied by the limit at 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h, which we know is 0, plus cosine x multiplied by the limit at 0 of sine h over h, which we know is 1. And therefore we obtain cosine x. In other words, the derivative of sine x is cosine x. A similar calculation would give us that the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So you see that if we dif different, differentiate sine, we obtain cosine. If we differentiate cosine, we obtain sine up to possibly a positive or negative sine. So how to remember which one has a negative sign in front? Well, if you look at the trig circle, and let's say we concentrate on the first quadrant, in which case both sine and cosine are positive. For an angle of 0, uh, we have a cosine of 1 and a sine of 0, and as x increases, x being the measure of the angle, increases from 0 to pi over 2, you see that the cosine decreases and the sine increases. So cosine x is a decreasing function on that interval from 0 to 2, and sine x an increasing function. Remember that the interpretation we gave for the derivative of a function at a certain value is the slope of the tangent line to the graph. So if, for instance, cosine x is a decreasing function, then the tangent line to the graph should be, at each point uh, in that interval, should be a line of negative slope. Therefore, the derivative should be negative sine x is increasing, the tangents to the graph should be pointing up, in other words, have positive slope, and the derivative should be positive. So that's why, at least when x is between 0 and pi over 2, we should have the derivative of sine x is positive, and cosine x is positive on that interval. And the derivative of cosine x, derivative of a decreasing function, should be negative, and this is why we have this negative sign in front of sine x.
Okay, so now we know the derivative of sine and cosine. And this is enough for us to deduce the derivative of all the other four standard trig functions because they're all expressed in terms of sine and cosine. For instance, tangent is just sine x over cosine x. So differentiating tangent is differentiating a quotient and we can use a quotient rule. We obtain the derivative of the top, that is derivative of sine, multiplied by the bottom, which is cosine, minus derivative of the bottom, which is derivative of cosine, multiplied by the top, that is sine, divided by the bottom squared, so we get cosine square x at the bottom. If we substitute for derivative of sine x cosine x, we get cosine x multiplied by itself, that is cosine square x. Derivative of cosine x on the other end is negative sine x. So because we subtract cosine x prime, we obtain plus sine square x. In other words, we obtain cosine square x plus sine square x divided by cosine square x. Since cosine square plus sine square of the same angle add up to 1, we obtain 1 over cosine square, which is the same as 1 over cosine x all of these squared, in other words, sequence squared x. Alternatively, we could have split the fraction into cosine square over itself plus sine square over cosine square. The first term in that sum is 1, the second is the square of tangent x, and therefore another equivalent expression is 1 plus tangent square x. So we have obtained that the derivative of tangent is secant squared or 1 plus tangent squared. What about derivative of secant? Again, this can be expressed in terms of sine and cosine. In this case, it is just a reciprocal of cosine. So again, we can use a quotient rule. So the derivative of the top is the derivative of 1, and we know that the derivative of a constant is 0. So the first part in this sum at the top is going to be 0. Then we have the opposite of the derivative of cosine x. Since the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, we get positive sine x over cosine square x. Another way to write this expression is to take sine over cosine that we multiply by 1 over cosine. Sine over cosine is tangent and 1 over cosine is secant, and so we get uh, secant x times tangent x, which we could also write as sine x multiplied by secant square x. So we have obtained that the derivative of secant is sine x times secant squared, or equivalently, equivalently secant times tangent. How about cosecant? Well, this is exactly the same way, except that the role of cosine is now played by sine. So we have the reciprocal of sine. We can use the quotient rule to differentiate this quotient. Since the derivative of the top, 1, is 0, we only get the opposite of the derivative of sine divided by sine squared. Since the derivative of sine is cosine, we get negative cosine x over sine square x which again we can write either as negative cosine x multiplied by cosecant squared x or as negative cosecant x multiplied by cotangent x. What about cotangent x? It is a quotient of cosine x and sine x and again since we have a quotient we can use a quotient rule. So we obtain the derivative of cosine multiplied by sine minus the derivative of sine multiplied by cosine, all this over the square of the bottom, therefore the square of sine x. We substitute negative sine x for the derivative of cosine, positive cosine for the derivative of sine, and that gives us negative sine square x minus cosine square x, so that is negative 1. So we obtain negative 1 over sine square x. Alternatively, we could have split the fraction and obtain negative sine square over itself, so in other words, negative 1 minus cosine square over sine square, 
which is really just cotangent squared. So we obtain that the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared, or alternatively negative 1 minus cotangent squared. Now we have obtained the derivatives for all the standard trig functions. And in the next video, we are going to see examples of derivatives of more complicated functions that we can define in terms of trig functions.